But, you know, brother will have a beard and then he goes for a job interview and people say, okay, you have to shave your beard. All right? And he... Why? Why would we do that? What kind of people are these who are asking us to just shave it? Because, you know, he's not going to get us into a job. It's like, come on, man. So, so and he's Muslim. So you tell me if Muhammad Sallallahu would come here with his beard and he would apply for this job, you would tell him, shave your beard? No. See, this is how we look at things. Again, I'm not going as to what and this and, you know, fard or sunnah or wajib or, no, no. Just a principle, man. The principle that we need to, and people are asking us to compromise everything in our deen. Everything. And they're not willing to compromise anything. Just not too long ago, someone told me that this is out of code of conduct in our company. This is in, in a Muslim country. And I said to him very kindly, and he's non-Muslim, I said, my dear, you know, Sheikh Khalifa has a beard, man. <laughs> Come on. And he really felt and he embarrassed. Because this is any, Alhamdulillah, mashallah, you know. What is, can, he, can he go to anyone and can he go to Sheikh Khalifa and tell him, you know, A'udhu Billah. Alhamdulillah, you know. Alhamdulillah, mashallah. We can say. And may Allah bless Sheikh Khalifa. Because I, I can use him as an example, a living example that don't tell me. Because he's following the sunnah. And I'm also following the sunnah. So, hijab, right, this is a big issue. Because now it's a bit of a different thing. There's no debate whether it's, you know, wajib or sunnah. This is part. This is a must for the sisters. But sisters today, you know, people are, oh, you have to take a hijab, look at this car, what is this, look at that, how can, you know, subhanAllah. This is not, we can't compromise our deen. If these people are not willing to take us, then you know what, maybe this is not a good place for us in this job. Someone else will, will take it. Someone else will do it. Who will respect you. Who will take it for who you are. Because you believe in this and you are firm on this. And as Allah says, whoever fears Allah, and Allah will make a way from him. You don't have to work in selling alcohol. You don't have to work in the, posi in the places that are involving haram. Are you telling us to quit? And he, Allah will provide. Allah will give you an exit. Allah will give you an exit. Put Allah before anyone. You'll see what happens. Put Allah before anyone you'll see what happens. And a beautiful ayah from the Qur'an, because this is also a trick of shaitan. Because the first thing you say, okay, I have this interview, and I know you'll ask me to do this or to do that, and I have to compromise my Islam. If I don't, then I'm not going to have money, and I'm going to be poor, I can't get married. Allah says in the Qur'an, الشَّيْطَانُ يَعِيدُكُمُ الْفَقْرَ وَيَأْمُرُكُمْ بِالْفَحْشَاءِ وَاللَّهُ يَعِيدُكُمْ مَغْفِرَةً مِّنْهُ وَفَضْلًا وَاللَّهُ وَاسِيٌ عَلِيمٌ That shaitan calls you to poverty. And he orders you the fahsha and the munkar, the evil things. The, the bad things. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he calls you to what? To forgiveness from him. And his fadl. His blessings. Allahu Akbar. Shaitan is telling you, man, if you don't do this, you're going to be poor. You're going to have to go you know, here. You're going to do this or that. You can't get married. You can't. Shaitan is making us fear this. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is calling us to forgiveness. To blessing from Him. He is the one who will give us. And we need to believe in this. Look what happens if we believe in this. The next point, brothers and sisters, and advice, and this is a tough one. It's seeking knowledge, learning about Islam. And this is my personal advice. With who and how. And this is a big one. Who you follow and how, why? Who 
can we look at so we can learn and the most important thing is brothers and sisters and one of the scholars he said that I do not take knowledge from anyone who doesn't practice what he preaches now of course this is, has to be taken with a, a grain of salt because we're all human beings and we make sure that we don't look at the scholars fault all the time because they're only human beings and if we will do that we're never gonna learn anything because everyone has faults so we need to be careful we need to be careful but at the same time we need to be very very diligent as to how we learn because knowledge makes the difference the knowledge of Islam is very deep and sometimes people get sucked in different parts because of the lack of knowledge or because of different issues that people have been calling into so be careful of jumping into things with emotions be careful of being pulled into trouble we don't follow people we follow Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and we follow these people on how they follow Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam we don't follow these people because they're superstars because his name is this and he appears on TV or that no we don't do that we need to follow based on how they follow Islam this is the criteria as Omar Khattab said what if I will be astray what if I will not do the proper things and the Sahaba said don't worry we'll take care of it so we need to be careful who we take our knowledge from how we take our knowledge the deen is deep it's not shallow don't rush don't rush into things take basics man be good Muslims take basics people try to jump into advanced science of things and they can't even throw the paper in the garbage a basic thing in Islam they can't even smile a basic thing in Islam but they are advanced or they're going to advanced levels of different Islamic sciences we need to prioritize look at the seerah we need to look of how Muhammad وسلم, taught the Sahabas we need to look how they learn manners before things how they learn Iman before and we need to look at these things I'm not calling and this is not my thinking I'm telling you look at the seerah without a doubt look at the ahadith that I'm quoting the ayats I'm not making these things up people need to go back to the Quran and the Sunnah we will have less problems in the world today because people without knowledge are being pulled emotionally into this place and that place and they're being promised this and that if they do this and this and causing problems and this is not Islam this is not Islam Islam is calculated based on proofs and we need to be careful with that learn and apply learn and apply learn and apply well a small thing if you learn and apply it's better than a million things that you learned and it's just sitting there the, the example of those who have carried the Torah they did not benefit from it did not care like the donkeys we want to be like donkeys with books on our backs because you can take knowledge but don't apply it we can learn this and this and this but we don't even know how to say salamu alaikum to our brothers on the street man smile be nice cutting each other with the cars parking you know taking three parking spots flashing pushing each other. I mean subhanallah fighting for a chair in the mall one chair man Allah. subhanallah it's like no I'm, I'm I've got more muscle on you I have to show everyone cussing each other out in the masjid subhanallah this we need to we need to really and one of the best things subhanallah we need to look in the seerah is how Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa taught the uh, Arabi the, the Bedouz how he dealt with them this is subhanallah the lessons that you can draw from this are precious how he dealt with a lot of these people how their hearts changed we need to learn these things subhanallah 
So we need to learn and apply it. And we need to learn the full picture. We can't just learn parts of things because if we only know bits and pieces from here and there, people can misguide us. People, actually, the way to misguide, the most common way is to take things out of context. Take things out. You, today you have those people who will take things out of context to make people do bad things. And today you have the same, a different kind of people who will take things out of the context and make people leave Islam like, it's, oh, you don't even have to do this. You know, it's like liberal, you know, it's just like, eh, you don't have to. doesn't mean, you know, people are using the same technique to go in this extreme or that extreme. And this is not from Islam. <coughs> so we need to understand the full picture of things. Giving da'wah with who, how. I mean, as Muslims, if we accepted Islam, we need to spread it. We need to tell people about Islam. We need to look. There's so many, alhamdulillah, like especially here. Asha, there's so many centers that you can volunteer. Uh, the Awqaf has many things that you can volunteer for. And we need to do something. We need to do some projects. I know there's some brothers who have taken it upon themselves to, do, to initiate projects, projects, to propose projects. And I'm actually meeting someone just after this lecture, you know, to see his project that he himself started and put his earned money and time to do it. And we need to find what we're good and we need to do this for Allah. Because on their judgment, you're going to ask, what did you do for Allah? What did you do for Islam? So I'm like, I'm not good at that. Okay, fine. Give your money to the project. Do something. Support someone who's good at it. Everyone can do something. So do some da'wah. Another thing, very important advice, getting involved in different groups and debating. Brothers, stay away from this, man. This is advice from me. Seek the truth. Stay away from these people who are always like this and that. And, 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 if you, and they have no proof. It's just from you feel like there's some hatred. Be careful. Be careful. Of course, the truth is one. And the right way is one. But be careful. Be careful because it's going to put hatred in your heart or something that you're not supposed to have. People are always like, these guys, that guy, call, let's do it here, there, and these people. Be careful, especially as a new Muslim. If you have no knowledge, people today I find with no knowledge, and they're like, oh, this guy is, uh, is uh, Bid'ai, and this guy is like that, and this guy is Dalin, and this guy. SubhanAllah, who are you to say that? Let the scholars debate that. You are no one to say these things. People get caught up hearing this lecture, that lecture, and automatically this is the ultimate truth. That this group and that group are outside, and this guy is the... Allahu Akbar. People are making takhfir on each other and these kind of things. How come? Who are we? People don't even read Arabic. They can't even... You know, and they're like make pointing fingers and saying this guy's this, this guy that, this... this. Allahu Akbar. Do not get caught into this. Learn Islam, man. Learn the basics. Focus. This is another way of shaitan to deviate people. You get them busy in this. Debating, debating, going online, forums. You are this and ah, and you're like this and bit. Subhanallah. If you look, subhanallah, the best debaters from our ummah, if you look at the, 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 the imams, like uh, Imam Abu Hanifa, one of the debaters, Sheikh Al-Islam Ibn Tamiyyah, Imam Ghazali, how they debate it? Imam Shafi, how he debated, he said, I wish, I wanted the, the truth come from the other side, actually. He said, never went into a debate just like trying to, I'm going to destroy this guy for the sake of the truth only. But people are like, oh, you, talk, you, you call me this, I'm going to show you. Go on Facebook, ta, 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 ta. Just like, just hit them hard, you know? And then you're like, oh, yeah, he didn't respond. Whew, yeah, I give it to him, you know? It's like, come on, man. And maybe the things that you said are not even correct. And just because you heard this sheikh or that person saying this and this, you've taken upon himself to destroy everyone else who's not like that. So this is not healthy for us actually. Not at this stage, not at being new Muslims coming back to Islam. We need to be careful. The truth is the truth, yes. We need to stick by the truth. We will not compromise the truth. But be careful that your heart does not become evil and inclined towards just fame and debate and putting people down just for the sake of your own uplifting and ego. 
that people say, oh yeah, man, you gave it to him, man. You really smoked him. And you're like, yeah, I did, man. Did 